Now Gobin has actually explained to you how we recover the dead from Talam. And perhaps because I was the one who chaired the meeting when our Tansri Khalid tabled the enactment to approve the money so that we can recoup, we can recover the debt from Talam. During Pakistan national time, a lot of land were given to our state subsidiaries so that we can enter into all this joint venture project with Talam. A lot of lands have been signed off. And of course, in return, we are hoping for houses to be returned to the government for some cash or some short lots. But when we checked, when we came into power, we checked all the files, nothing has come back. Or very little has come back. But there is no record on it. But of course, Tan Sri Khalid has been. He has appointed a team of experts to look through all the minutes of meetings and look through all the agreement that we have and discover that actually over the years Talam has owed the state government a total sum of 392 million. That was not in the book. We discovered it. And Pastor Kali called Talam and said, look, now I know you have a lot of projects in Slango. We are going to have more projects. But make sure you pay, pay up the debt before we approve your future projects. And Talam has to comply. That's the reason he signed the agreement. I mean, think that they have owe so much to the state government. If we want to, choose, to sue them in the court, that may take years. But we managed to force them to sign an agreement admitting that they have owed us 392 million. And say, okay, since they signed the agreement admitting the debt, so pay up. He said, we don't have cash. We have only about 50 million cash for you. Never mind, pay that first 50 million, we will get it first. Then what about the balance? 342 million. Well, we said, you have land, then give us your land. Of course, they had to agree. They appoint their valuer. And we also, the government, have our own valuer. Of course, private valuers, they are value higher. You know? We said, never mind. We will take it at your price. Well, some people say, just like Chua Tiyong. Chua Tiyong said, look, you will take the price of their valuers, of course it's higher, but it doesn't flash value. We said, never mind, we are not brainless. We have actually, we have actually put another clause in the agreement. In the event, all those land that given back to the state government does not flash a value of 342 million, then you have to top up, give us more land. This is how we deal with it. And now we have collected almost all 100% of the debt from Kala. This is what we have done for the people's land. It's not easy. You know, we call it the, the debt. That is gone. You know, in, in corporate world, you know, if you can collect back debt of 30%, your boss will say, well, well done. If you, can, if you can collect 50% of bad debt, your boss will say, excellent. So now we have collected almost 100%. This is the work of a genius, Tan Sri Khalid. <laughs> and sometimes I complain to you in Tan Sri, you know you are good at collecting debt, but you are very stingy in the government spending. I say, you are like a Chinese businessman. But recently I told him, Tan Sri, I think you are not a, a Chinese businessman. You are worse than a Chinese businessman. <laughs> it's very calculated in all this project, all the spending. Oh, this is the situation now. Now, Najib, go back to Najib. So, Najib is very worried now, as you can see his face. You compare his pictures now and the pictures, his pictures of three years ago, when he assumed the duty of Prime Minister. Very different. Yeah, I think he looks like he is getting 30 years older than his age. Now, it's not easy for him this round because time has changed. The whole situation has changed. I remember in one occasion, one of the functions, Najib was addressing the people. And as usual, he was attacking the opposition. He was attacking PR. He told the people, don't trust Pakata Raga. They are destructive. They don't know how to govern. Don't trust the opposition. 
opposition is useless. They know only how to spend money, they don't know how to make money. If you trust opposition, the country will finish. And before he finished his next sentence, his secretary came out to the stage and whispered him, Dr. Sri, please don't attack the opposition because now you are speaking in Petaling Jaya Slango. In Slango, we are the opposition. The time has changed. Those days they can attack us. Opposition, useless, destructive, don't know how to govern. But now, after five years of being a government in four states, especially in Slango and Penang, we can proudly tell every one of you, and you, I said, I'm certain you will agree, that the government of Pakatarat in Slango and Penang, even though we have only five years of experience, but our five years of government is better than the Barisan National 50 years of government. We have proven ourselves. Now in the next generation, it's not a fight between the opposition and the government. It's a fight between the two coalitions. That is Barisan National and Pakataraya. Because whenever Najib comes to Slango, or whenever he goes to Penang, Kedah or Kelantan, immediately he becomes the opposition. So it is not a fight between the government and the opposition. It's the fight between Barisan National and Pakataraya. And if you look at our policies, all the programs that we have implemented in Slango, it is so different. We have a welfare program. We have a program that, that takes care of people from womb to tomb. We take care of the baby. The newborn baby will give them hundred dollars, invest, invest the bank, and so that we can pay them one thousand five hundred dollars at the age of eighty. This is our promise. And we actually have a endowment for that. We take care of our students. For those students who are sitting for SPM, who came, who come from the poor family, who can't afford to go to tuition, the state government we provide free tuition to 100 students in every state constituency. For the past four years, since the very day we became the government. We take care of the women. We take care of the old folks, all the senior citizens. We have the job shopping for senior citizens. And when the senior citizens pass away, we will give them some consolation. In Chinese, in Cantonese, you say Pakam. And I always tell people, during Barisan National Governance for 50 years, they don't know how to give Pakam. But never mind. In the coming generations, we the people will give Barisan National Pakam. So that they will never come back again. This is a whole series of programs. And Barisan National have every opportunity to do it, to implement any one of them in the past 50 years and in other states for the past 55 years but they have failed to do any one of them but Pakatariya, being a new government we have the interest, we have the welfare of people in mind therefore we can gain, we can implement our welfare policy from the first day when we become the government of Islam we give every one of you free water every month that worth $11.40. I always tell people, if you, if you use more than that, your bill will show, for example, this month your bill shows that you have to pay $12.40. Then you can see there's a minus $11.40, you pay only $1, one ringgit. But if your bill shows that you only use up $10.40, Minus eleven dollar forty cents. There is a negative one dollar. The government still you still owe you one dollar. Besides giving you free water, this is a program that we give to every citizen in Slango. And we are sure if we manage well, this country is a rich country. But it was poorly managed. It was badly managed by Barisan National. And Barisan National. Given, given 55 years, I incurred more debt 
They are making wealth for the people. We are, we are petroleum producing country, but yet we look at our conditions compared to Singapore, compared to Indonesia today, we are in bad shape. And we cannot allow this to carry on. Good policy must come. And Slango, besides giving all this welfare program, in the past four years, in the past four years, almost five years, we have spent 700 million for our welfare program for the people. That has never been done by Barisan National. In five years, we spent 700 million for the people. Returning to people, besides our normal expenditure. Every year, our budget is 1.6 billion. That is for our management and for all the development projects. And that has been done by the government, by, by the Barisan National during that time. We spend the same amount of money making the government and providing development for Selangor, 1.6 billion a year. But besides that, we have spent more than 700 million ringgit for the past four years for the people. That is additional to the 1.6 billion every year. But during this time, we never increase our quick rent. Our assessment rate, we never increase that. Yet, we can increase our reserve. I believe that's what I told you just now. We have increased our reserve. From 2008, when we took over from Palestine National, the state reserve stood at 1.4 billion. That is after 50 years of governance by Palestine National. But within a short span, of four years, we have managed to increase our reserve from 1.4 billion to 2.5 billion. After spending so much, that is as much as 700 million for our welfare program. Now please, just do a simple calculation. How do we manage to do that? Without increasing the taxes, we increase our expenditure on welfare, Yet, we can increase our reserve. Now, there are two reasons for that. Firstly, because we know how to manage the finance well. Spend wisely. For unnecessary expenditure, we don't spend. That is the first point. Secondly, which is more important, we have a very strict policies. We have a very important policies. That is, we make sure that our Menteri Besar, the Speaker, the State Assemblyman, the Parliamentarian, the Councillors, we make sure that they don't mama. Yeah. That is the most important thing. We make sure that they don't mama. We make sure that none of them will be given land for development. During Barisan National time, if you are Adun or you are a, a MP, Surely you will get land. And if you know how to apply for a big piece of land, you can apply for 50 acres, 100 acres, then after that you enter into a joint venture agreement with the developers. Overnight you become millionaire. Yeah. But no more under Pakatarya. We do not allow any one of us holding any position in the government to apply land to become developers. That is our pledge and that is our policy that shows that we can make sure that we become a clean government. And that is the most important thing. And we know that a lot of policies, a lot of programs, a lot of implementation by the federal government or by the national have failed to do that. What they have done is they have privatized almost the whole country to, the, to their own cronies. As you know, TMB has been corporatized, almost privatized. The water supply has been privatized. Our highway has been privatized. Everything has been privatized. So that is our promise. That's why we say, if Pakatara, we can make it to the Putrajaya with your support, we will make sure that you will review all the policy, we will review all the privatized agreement to make sure that we will take back all we are entitled to. The Rakyat of Malaysia have the right to claim back what we are entitled to. We should not allow 
Vice Ambassador to continue with their policies so that to make sure that our next generations, our generations to come, will still have something to enjoy on this piece of land. Otherwise, it is actually frightening. Ladies and gentlemen, you know our budget, our federal government budget for the past 15 years has been in deficit for 15 years. And you know, I think it's time up. Our spending, our annual budget, the federal government annual budget, stand at 260 billion. Now, 260 billion. This is our budget. That, that is, this is our expenditure for management, for operation, and for development. 260 billion that we have to spend every year. And do you know how much is our debt, our national debt? I just now mentioned our annual budget is 260 billion, but our debt is close to 500 billion. And this is so much that Barisan National has given us have given us for the past 45 years. So I think enough is enough. And I know you are ready. I know you are ready. And make sure that your friends are ready, your relatives are ready, all your colleagues are ready. Make sure that this round will make it. This round we have to make it. This is a golden opportunity and I hope every one of you will not miss it. So make sure in the coming generation, after the generation, when I come back here again speaking to you, we will be the federal government. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good night.